78% of professors in the UK are men. We interviewed six female academics at the University of Sheffield to talk about their experiences and the struggles that women face progressing in science, technology, engineering and maths. One of the issues is um, more to do with how we socialise boys and girls at a very um, young age. So for example, when my daughter started school, she started school when she was four, it took three months before she came home and said to me, women can't be scientists. So it's not just things like, for example, loads of books about Disney princess and that means that women don't want to go on to be engineers. Of course that is a massive factor, but it's not just about things like that. It's also about things like um, how women portray and represent themselves. So, for example, um, in terms of thinking, po you know, talking positively about you and your achievements, how that affects women moving up and on into, into different subjects. The data are very clear that in an area such as biology, which has always been very popular with, with females, that the undergraduate population is more than 50% women. Postgraduate population is more than 50% women. Postdocs is around 50-50, there's not much in it. But then once you move into lectureships and beyond, then the proportion of female drops markedly. And there are only about 15% of professors that biology are female. And, and I always ask myself that question, why is it that a country like this, where engineering basically started, it all started here, is not seeing a shift. In fact, it's kind of going the other way around. And it's not just at the um, sort of professor level where there are, there are fewer women. There, there aren't actually that many women doing PhDs in, that, in this area. Um, so, for example, at the moment I have um, five PhD students of whom only one is a, is a woman and I don't get many female applicants to do PhDs in, in this area. In terms of students, undergraduate students particularly, it's stayed the same for the last 20 years to 9-10%. Then it's static and nothing is happening. And actually there is a danger that it starts to decrease because there are less and less female students taking A-levels A in maths. I was the first female head in the department and the department is 100 years old. There have been many other females in the department since then, but it's taken that length of time for her to be female. So I think there is a, still an issue with the number of females in senior positions. The challenge is how do we, we change that? So rather than looking back, I think we need to look forward and we need to think about ways in which we can capture the whole range of talent that we've got out there. In general, women don't feel ready to go for things. And so they wait and wait and wait and wait constantly for someone to say, you are ready, it's okay, come on, go for that promotion or for that project or for that, you know, new venture. There's a huge difference in the confidence that people give off. Um, and you need a huge amount of confidence. You need to have a voice. You need to be confident in asking questions and saying when something um, is confusing or something when there's something that you don't understand and I find that the males in the department are a lot more confident to do that than a lot of the females I feel like. You know, there's research that's found that women tend not to want to speak positively about themselves, they have a real issue in that and that can then be a problem when they're going on to things that you know men tend to do it differently or better actually than they do. Being able to say, I am good at what I am good, is very important. And women, we don't tend to be very good at it. Not even on paper. You read CVs and they read really, really plain compared to what you see in, in some men's cases. The CVs are like, I did this and it was great and this is what I achieved. And, and women are much plainer. It is important to be able to, to celebrate what you do and to, you don't have to, <laughs> if it's not true, don't. But if it's true, why not? Why not say that you were amazing? Why not say that this is what you can achieve? Because no one else will be able to 
to read that. So the field that I work in has a very small number of female researchers. So if I go to conferences, we are very, very much in the minority. In some ways, that's a bit of an advantage because you're distinctive and everybody tends to remember you and know you. I was told a lot when I was trying to become, when I, when I wanted to become an academic, I was told no, quite a lot. Um, and I think actually a lot of people do listen to no and they take it and that's it. I would always say, don't ever, ever, ever listen to someone who tells you no to keep going. I hope, you know, in 10 years time we'll have, I don't know, five, six, seven professors, female professors of chemistry here. Do it. It's fantastic. I mean, at the end of the day, I spend a significant amount of time doing maths. Either teaching undergraduates maths or working with PhD students or with other mathematicians and doing maths myself and I love it and I get paid for it. I mean, what could be better than that? Uh, yeah, I love it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I love my PhD. <laughs> when I get up in the morning, and you get ready and take a shower, I get excited to come to work and I think, gosh, they pay me to do this and, and it's so exciting to come and just to think, they're going, not, not only I love what I do, but they pay me to do it and it's just so, so amazing.